All right, everybody, it is time to have a little chat. How is it going? We are sitting at less than 24 hours until part one of Amphibia's finale begins. Tomorrow we have the three armies and the beginning of the end. I am not ready. I have two Amphibia videos coming out today. One of them is the one you're listening to right now, and one is a bingo. Woohoo, bingo! A bingo for like a little guessing game, little predictions. As I'm counting these last three episodes or four episodes if you count like the two parts, whatever. I'm counting these last few episodes as the finale, so that'll be like for the bingo and whatnot. But today I wanted to kind of talk about the Q&A that was held on the 23rd, so several days ago, almost a week ago. And there are some pretty interesting questions. I have a whole page of notes here. So we have like a whole bunch of people from the show. We have Matt Browley, of course. We have the voice actors here for Sprig, Polly, and Hop Hop. Uh, the voice actor for Sasha also shows up uh, late into the panel. Then we have the voice director for the show, the char uh, a character designer, and two of the art directors. Uh, I'll put up all their names now just to save some time. And that's cool. They're all talking about things. And each person had some really, really nice uh, answers to their questions. And I'm pretty much just going to, you know, kind of go over some of my favorite parts about this and just talk a little bit about it, show some of my favorite clips just in a row. Uh, Got to be kind of a bit of a messy video because I don't really know how to do a video like this without it just being me showing clips that I like. So, yeah, let's just uh, let's get into it. So around 10 minutes in, they start by doing like a little table read where Matt has uh, wrote a script for the voice actors to read where it's basically just like uh, imagine uh, an episode of Amphibia where the planters go uh, to this live event. So it's like very weird because it's like they're reading off a script where the planters enter in the building that they're literally in and they sit next to them and it's like really, really awkward because it's like as if, as if they're actually there. And it's really funny. Uh, I encourage you to go listen to it for yourself. I won't really talk about it too much there. Uh, there is a point where they talk about, where Sprig uh, talks about cartoons and he's like, all animation is not just for kids and it's it's pretty good. I like it. <laughs> animation, cartoons. Anne told me all about these. They're beautiful works of art for all ages, not just children. <laughs> However, at the end of the uh, table read, it's so funny. Uh, in the table read itself, Matt, he's been doing like the uh, directions about like what's happening. You know, like, oh, Sprig walks this way or Polly looks at this. And then near the end, he's like, Matt Brawley walks into the room and freaks out over the planters. And then <laughs> it's so funny because Sprig and Hop Pop attack him with their tongue attack. They're like, tongue beam, fire! Just then, they are intercepted by creator and executive producer, Matt Brawley. <laughs> Oh my god! Hop up! Sprig! Polly! How is this possible? This dweeb is blocking our path! <laughs> Quick, Sprig! Tongue beam! Fire! On it! <laughs> Both Hop Up and Sprig launch their tongues at max velocity! Well, whatever the reason, hey, since you're already here, can I get you three to sign some stool? <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny, and then they just bolt out of there, and they go look for like a boba shop because they came in thinking it was a boba shop, and then they leave trying to go find where the wherever the boba shop is, and then Anne finds them. And they and then they go home, but it, it's so funny. I encourage you to listen to it yourself. Then one of the very first questions was a question to all the panelists, uh, and it was something along the lines of, during the show, who did you grow along with, or like who did you relate to while with their growth? A lot of them answered Anne, which just makes sense. There is a severe lack of Marcy content. Like pretty much any time people are like, hey, what character made you think of this? Not a single one of them said Marcy. There were many Sashas, many Anne's, many Sprigs, many Hot Pops, many Pollies. Not a single Marcy. Kind of felt bad, you know? Kind of felt bad. Not a single Marcy. Like, come on, dude. Oh. Uh. Felt kind of bad. Uh, then the next question was, what traits come out when you're playing this character? And this is directed toward the voice actors. I'll play some of their clips now. I thought it was just very funny. When I first read for Hop Pop, he was kind of just uptight, kind of angry that, you know, Anna Zare is going to throw her out every day. And so he's kind of pinched in the back, and then I put the uh, Texas accent on him. And But when I do that now, you feel kind of uptight. One of the first lines is like, it's 5 a.m. Everyone, it's like everyone, we get your understanding. Don't remind me. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and it was oh. super, super energetic. And when I saw a little, you know, picture of Polly, I was like, oh, she's got a little bow. She's round. She's so cute. You know, I'm like, oh, she's so she's got to sound super cute, right? But then I started seeing this really like mischievous side of her, and that's I feel like what really kind of 
made Polly like a little bit different than than the way that she looked, and that's kind of like where she started getting like this gravelly kind of like <laughs> like that's like. Then they start talking about um, the depiction of California or Los Angeles and the internet in the show, where as you can tell. Uh, you know, if you look at like the background or if you look at like the internet, they portray like YouTube really, really well where they have like Fortnite thumbnails and like a bunch of clickbait on YouTube. It's so funny. Apparently there was even like an apology video and that's so funny because like that's literally what would show up on YouTube with like, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I've made a severe continuous lapse in my judgment moment. <laughs> um, was like an apology video. There was like a, and I was like, that's the funniest shit I've ever seen. And then they also talk about how they depict California, how it's like ideal, the ideal California, not when it's on fire. And they make a really, really funny joke about it, like the here. Having like LA beat idealized version with like, you know, no fire. <laughs> you know. Yet. 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 <laughs> yet. Not yet. <laughs> I loved that. Not yet, because it's like, oh boy, it might be on fire during this finale. <laughs> and then they talk about this weird inside joke called Bibsy. I didn't even really know about Bibsy, but they talk about Bibsy here. I'll, I'll kind of just like play the clip here. The design team, Kat Tsukiman, specifically created this really weird character called Bibsy. It's, just, it's <laughs> very strange, very strange. There's like Bibsy all over the place. And it actually got to a point where I was like, you guys, you need to like, you need to like bring it down because like it's just everywhere and I was like it's funny but like nobody knows what this is like but he's this really funny like cartoon rabbit that was supposedly our version of like Mickey Mouse in the world like they, they created like Bibsy World there was a guy with like a Bibsy World t-shirt it was super strange but like these are the kinds of things that like as a, as a crew it's like it's like a we have internal memes can you uh, draw Bibsy and show us no you know what no 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 his face is creepier than this He's so disgusting. I, I love him. I hate it, but I, it's like, oh, I like it. Just cause it's like in the background. So it's like, a, it's like one of their own memes. I just like how they refer to Bibsy as like a self meme. It's like the team's meme. They put their own memes in the show that only they understand. I think that's just so cool. Something about that is just so cool where the creators just have fun with the show. And like, even though the, the viewers won't really ever understand it to their level, it's like that they'll get out of the show that no one else will. And I think that's really cool. They also discussed their uh, struggles with working from home during the pandemic. It was pretty sad to listen to about how the team had such such good chemistry with each other, how much they enjoyed working to, with each other as a team and in person. And then the struggles that came with all having to go their separate ways and do a lot of like recording or just work from home. And even though they had, they, they seemed to do a pretty solid job uh, with what happened. Uh, there none of them really seemed too ecstatic about it though There were some fun stories that they had and I encourage you again If you're gonna go check this out go go take a listen to those. They're pretty interesting Then they talk about heart stomper, which is Sasha's uh, pretty much her theme, which is pretty cool and uh, That I really liked that little part. Uh, I don't really want to go too into too much detail because I feel like if I do I'll spend forever on this video I'm just kind of going over just a little recap But they talk about heart stomper and I think the facts that they talk about is pretty cool Basically just how they play Sasha's theme for the very first time in the third temple And then heart stomper is basically like a remix of her theme sort of and then Matt Browley was really impressed when fans like you know catch on to little musical motifs such as like flight of the moth uh, on his twitter he was he was even like who anyone who caught the flight of the moth motif you are now my best friend and i thought it was really interesting another motif on the box i had no idea that it would actually work but it did and and he sent us to a place where we'd never have to grow apart where the three of us could be friends forever together no 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 this is her body but we got her locked in a little room up here da, 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 da. i can't really do it well but you know what i mean right that that marcy theme it's like the same like four notes you can hear it if you listen to the corn the king and i think that's really really cool i'm also a big fan of musical motifs anyway we have uh people discussing character spin-offs which i was like whoa this seems really interesting and many we, there are quite a few answers uh one of the main ones was actually polly i think four people maybe three to four people were like yeah let's get a polly spit off and i was like what polly i was like okay i guess personally like if it was me i'd probably want one of the human characters because they're my three favorites but I, I could also you know i'd be down for a sprig like a sprig uh character story but then someone gave a really really good answer and I was like, you know what? Go for it. I would love a character spinoff. What about like a Mrs. Croker 
prequel. Yes. <laughs> it was so funny. And I was like, you know what? I would love a Mrs. Croker freaking prequel. Mrs. Croker is so funny. And like her, her and Archie and like that episode where she has like a weird past when Sprigger's trying to get her to like her. Oh my gosh, there's so much with Mrs. Croker and she's so cool and she like can actually fight and yet she's like super old. She's old enough to where she can call Hot Pop a youngster. So it's like, what has this woman been through? It's like, I want to know more about freaking Mrs. Croker. Oh, she's so funny. <laughs> I would love a Mrs. Croker freaking spin-off. That'd be so funny. And then also somebody mentioned uh, a Loggle and Wally spin-off. I would love that, dude. Dude, One-Eyed Wally is so funny. The the side dude, the side characters of Fortwood are so good. Particularly, in my opinion, One-Eyed Wally and uh, and Mrs. Croker are probably like the two best. Uh, there are obviously some other good ones. Like Ivy is really cool. Ivy's mom is cool. Uh, Loggle is freaking hilarious, dude. Oh, so funny. After that, a question was asked toward the voice actors, uh, asking, hey, would the planters get along with any other of the characters that you voiced? And I think the best moment from this was right here. Hey, Goofy, how you doing? Gorge, it's nice seeing you, hot dog. <laughs> Because Bill Farmer is the voice actor for Goofy, and so it's like having Goofy and Hop Hop talk to each other. Oh, it's so funny. It, it was such a, it was so funny, dude. I love it. <laughs> and then here we go. This is honestly probably my favorite question. And this was basically, what was the inspiration for the core? And I love this. I'm gonna play probably a good amount of this clip because I thought it was super, super interesting. So I'm gonna play that now. Yeah, 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 the, the core. Um, so, you know, you're always looking for your, your villain that is thematically tied to your characters. And, and so that was like a really big thing for me where I was like, okay, what is like, what is the ultimate evil of this show? You know what I mean? What does that look like? We had this line that got eventually cut that I always really liked where it was like, in trying to enshrine the best of us, we have preserved the worst of us. You know what I mean? And I, I really like how this show is about change and it's about growth and the core is about maintaining this sick, twisted status quo. And so, you know, I don't want to give spoilers away or anything like that, and you'll get a little bit into more of the core, but the idea that this core is like, you know, I'm gonna pick up where we left off, it's gonna be exactly the same as it was before, and everything in here is gonna be perfect. You know what I mean? So, to me, the core was this nice thematic opposite to everything that the show was trying to tell you was good. I just think that's so cool. It, we, this is like a really good way because we don't really know exactly like to a point like we know kind of what Darcy was looking for but this gives us a bit more of a clear answer because obviously we know Darcy is trying to return things to how they once were but it, it does feel kind of nice you know not so much reading between the lines but we, we know what Darcy wanted but having it sort of like clear cl clear cut and just being like this is what Darcy is aiming for the core wants to return things to how the way they once were and because of that it is like the perfect counter toward Amphibia as a show, being all about growth and finding yourself and moving forward and evolving and how the core basically doesn't want to do that. And it just wants things to go back to the way they were because that's what the glory days were. And I think that's just so cool. I think it's so cool how both epically and thematically the core is such a just a great villain I, I i love the core i love darcy you all know i'm obsessed with darcy it's a thing so then i believe after this they start asking like a little bit of a lightning round questions and there are some really really good ones uh i'm gonna not really i'm gonna kind of ignore quite a few of them sasha's voice actor also shows up right around this point which is like around an hour and 10 minutes in so that means there's only like 40 minutes left of the panel so unfortunately she doesn't get too much time here but uh, she does say, what up, nerds, which is pretty funny. What up, nerds? <laughs> so they talk about their favorite emotional moments from the show, which was fun. They talk about what the takeaway of the show is. Uh, talk about what they wanted to do as their careers when they first were, or when they were younger. They talk about uh, True Colors, the theme song. They, they even try and th sing the theme song, the one with like the lyrics. Uh, and they just completely fail at it, which is pretty funny. Let's give it a shot here. Now I find myself in the wild unknown. Now I find myself in the wild. What? The? <laughs> I, I know some of the words, not all of them. I, I don't know. I don't know that I even remember that. With the frogs and toes, and I'm on my own. But there's something here to discuss. I don't know. I don't know. One, one leap after another. I thought it was an instrumentalist. <laughs> It is, Bill. This is like this is like a deep I know. Cut. Oh, I know. I know. We'll get I've it. We'll it. get it one. Yeah, day. I'll work on that. 
They talk about what merchandise they'd want for the show, and Matt pretty much says, hey, I'd like action figures, which I'd be totally down for. It's, I don't know if it could happen. It's just more of like a thing that they'd want. It's like, hey, if merch can happen, what is the main thing that you'd want? And Matt was like, all right, I want some action figures. And I'd be like, I would buy a freaking Marcy action figure. I would buy a Darcy action figure, dude. Oh, come on, dude. I want to see Darcy. There wouldn't be a Darcy action figure. They just probably have an Anne action figure, like a Sprig and an Anne. There's no way they would go all the way to Darcy, right? Like, come on. <laughs> Lego Darcy, can we get Lego Amphibia? Just like Lego Ida. <laughs> they also talk about Loggle getting buff. And the thing that was really funny uh, that I remember, which is back in, I, th I think they said it was episode two or something with like Hot Pops Kane. I think that was like episode three, I forget. Hot Pops Kane was in episode two. But anyway, uh, <laughs> they were talking about how, remember in Loggle's shop, how he had that super buff Loggle in like the one of the very early episodes? Whoa, Loggle. We gotta talk about this, man. We're coming back. We're gonna talk about this. All right, goodbye. I We're gonna talk about this, buddy. <laughs> I love that so much, Justin. You were like, okay, bye bye. You know, like at the end, like, okay, bye -bye. let's talk about it. And now, I guess it's so funny because like he's swollen. They're not talking about it. So. Despite him being buff, and it, it's so funny, dude. I love buff Loggle. It's such a funny, stupid change. And then, of course, we have the absolutely legendary line. Thank goodness someone asked this stupid question. I'll just play the clip right here and now with no, you you already know what's coming. Bill to say, Grime, I love you in his hot pop voice. Yeah, it came out weird, I know. <laughs> But I thought that's how Hop Up would say it. <laughs> that's how he would say it. Yeah. It's so dumb, dude. It's so stupid. I love it, but it's so dumb. Like freaking Hop Pop. <laughs> it's just... Oh, I love it. It's so funny. Anyway, so there's only a couple more questions. They talk about Anne's sort of Dragon Ball transformation. How it was very, like inspired by Dragon Ball and. It, like how it was like not many female characters sort of have like a Dragon Ball uh, transformation where a lot of it in like shonen anime or something I think they mentioned where a lot of it is just like male characters so that was pretty cool and then I think one of the final questions or the final question talked about uh, the pilot and the vision of the pilot versus the vision of Amphibia now and they did go into detail but basically they just said that the version of Amphibia now is the perfect version of the show and the pilot it was basically just going to be like it was, it, he mentioned that the pilot was like a one season show. It would have been really cool and epic and fun, but it would only literally last for one season, sort of over the garden wall-esque, which is a super good show. I don't, I, even, I don't really remember too much about it. I just remember being really good. I did watch it a long time ago and I remember loving it, but I really, I really need to rewatch it. Maybe I should review that uh, after Amphibia ends. So that'll, maybe that'll be a video I'll do in the future. But there we go. That's a recap of what happened. Kind of just going through it. Again, I do encourage you to listen to this on your own. It is around two hours, a little below. But uh, I talked about all my favorite moments. And uh, I'll have it linked down in the description if you want to check it out. Just the YouTube video. It was very fun. I enjoyed listening to it. And if you're a big Amphibia fan, I, again, encourage you to listen to it. So yeah, that'll be it. Uh, I'll have another video later with my bingo. And uh, then now we'll just have to get ready for the finale. I I'm still not ready. It feels very surreal. All right. See you in a bit, everybody.